Welcome to the second episode of Australian Leyland Mini Restoration and in this episode we're focusing on the mechanicals. We're going to be cleaning up the engine, taking off the old carby, cleaning it up, reinstalling it and then we're going to determine top dead center in the engine for timing purposes, take out the old ignition system, install a new ignition system and then refine the timing to try and get the car running as best we can. So here is where most of the initial action is going to be taking place. Um, we've got the, the old distributor and coil down there. This is an 1100 engine that I had put in the car. This car originally had a 998cc and then I had this 1100 rebuilt for it. It's had gearbox work. Over the years I've probably put about four or five thousand dollars into this engine alone so it's worth saving and it's worth keeping the radiator was reconditioned um, all these things were done on it although looking at it you wouldn't realize it um, it is a good engine underneath and it's certainly worth keeping it running uh, so we're going to go and start with basically hosing down the engine with degreaser to get rid of any other any of the crap we can so it's a bit cleaner to work in the area uh, we're then going to take the carby off give that a clean put it back on uh, then we'll start working on some of the timing things. So, a fair bit to do, a bit of a mess in there. Um, but a lot of parts are ready to go in and I've got a lot of new brackets and other things as well that are ready to go into the engine. So, let's see how we go. So the next step will be draining the oil from the engine and then we'll start to work on the distributor and other components and the carby as well, uh, clean up the carby and try and get it all back together and see if we can get it running. Once you've got the motor washed down and clean you can start by undoing the sump plug. Now on minis they're often pretty tight and often they're, often they will strip the threads so you just got to be careful with these things, this one's coming off fine. Not much metal attached to that, which is a good sign. So we're going to leave this to drain overnight. And what I'm also going to do is just turn over the starter motor, um, which will help pump the rest of the oil through the system. The next thing we're going to do is take off the carburetor. So there are two bolts here which connect to the inlet manifold. One at the top here as I'm looking at the front of the car, one at the top left another at the bottom right. The bottom right's a little bit hard to get to. Um, the first thing we're going to need to do though is take off the choke and accelerator cables. That's pretty easy. There are just small little nuts there that you can undo to take those out. And we're going to take off the fuel line. I'm not going to take the whole inlet manifold off, just the carburetor. Um, that's all we need to get access to just to clean the carby before we refit it and put in new fuel. Now that we've got the carby out, the main thing we want to do is give it a thorough clean. So we've purchased some carby cleaner. We'll undo the fuel bowl here, clean that out. Any existing gunk or fuel that's in there, uh, we'll get rid of. Clean it all inside the butterfly here and in the, in the air intake there. Um, we've got a new fuel filter to fit. And once that's all cleaned out, we'll refit it all and that's when we'll also set up our little auxiliary fuel tank as well that'll just hang from the bonnet so we can use that to tune the car. Whilst I had the car be off, I also gave it a bit of a clean up around the uh, inlet manifold there 
I just got the carby cleaner onto all of this and on the flat surface of this as well because it's important that you do get a, a flat flush connection between the carby and the inlet manifold. Reason being of course if air is getting in uh, that's going to upset your fuel air mixture with the carburetor so you just want to make sure that's all clean, your gasket's good between the carby and the manifold and that should help the car run a bit better. Now what we're going to do is get the engine to top dead center position so we can start working on the timing. So now the rocker covers off here and you can see where all of the uh, inlet and exhaust valves are positioned. So top dead center is when your cylinder number one is at its highest position for the compression stroke. So what you want to check first of all is that the piston is right at the top of the cylinder chamber. Now you can do that by taking a screwdriver and seeing whether or not through the spark plug hole whether or not the piston is right at the top. In this case, the screwdriver only goes that far down, it is right at the top, but you don't know whether that's compression or exhaust stroke. Now when the engine is at top dead center, the inlet valve on cylinder number one here, so it reads cylinder one, two, three, four. The inlet valve on cylinder number one will be coming to a close and your exhaust valve will already be closed in order to take the compression stroke when you have your cylinder one in this position with the valves, your cylinder four this should be what's called on the rock and that is when your exhaust valve is just starting to open. So your inlet valve for cylinder four is closed but your exhaust valve, the one right on the end here, is just starting to open. You can see that a little bit is the case here. The spring is a bit compressed on cylinder four here. So that's one thing you need to look at with your timing because you don't know whether that piston being at the top, you don't know whether that's its exhaust stroke or its compression stroke unless you look at the position of the valves on each, each of the cylinders. So that's how you know when you're at a roughly top dead centre there on the position of the pistons and the position of your valves. Before we look at the flywheel and the timing marks to determine top dead centre, one other way you can easily determine whether an engine is at top dead centre is the position of the arm that's on the distributor. Now generally top dead center, when it's firing stroke for cylinder one, it should actually be pointing, the arm of the distributor should be pointing to cylinder one. The problem is that these are often installed 180 degrees out. So in other words, the arm could be pointing down to the bottom left there. But if it's been installed correctly, top right, it should be pointing to cylinder one when it's at top dead center. But again, you don't know whether that's compression or exhaust stroke. So that's why you've got to look at the valves to determine whether it's compression or exhaust stroke to know approximately whether or not you're at top dead center. We're looking down the clutch side of the motor now. And on the side of the clutch here, you've got this little inspection plate. And this inspection plate allows you to access the flywheel and see where your top dead center mark is. Uh, so I've loosened this bolt already. Obviously you have to do it with a spanner if you do it, but the inspection panel comes open like that and you can see inside. The problem of course is that you can't actually see these markings uh, with, with the engine in the car unless you use a mirror. So what we've done is we've set up a little mirror on the other side of the clutch there and we can look back into that and turn the engine over we're just using um, a mirror from the birdcage just hanging it in here and we're able to actually see the timing marks inside the casing. So we'll get a different angle so you can see that and I'll turn the motor over by hand so you can see those timing marks moving and where we need the engine to be. So this is looking in the reflection of a small mirror that we've set up just so we can see the timing marks on the flywheel. So the current position you can see there is top dead center. It's marked by the, the symbols one stroke four. Now, if we turn it further, you can see it turning in there. You've got five degrees, 10 degrees and 15 degrees. But for the purpose of ignition timing, you want to be at top dead center, which is the initial mark of one stroke four. And you should see these marks, of course, when cylinders one and four are roughly at top dead center, the uh, 
the cylinder one will be in its uh, compression phase, cylinder four starting its exhaust phase. So now that we've got the engine into top dead center position, we're actually putting a new distributor, new coil system into the car. So we can take the original distributor out in its current position and slot the new one in. As I mentioned, the arm is gonna be pointing to cylinder one for top dead center. We've been through that before. I've loosened these bolts already for the distributor, I've loosened it up so it shouldn't take too long to get out. But I'll just show you how that comes out now. Also out. And then you just want to pull it straight out gently. You don't want to lose your worm gear in there. It might need a bit of a, a shake. There you are. And that's it. So then out here, you can see the approximate angle it went in. So the new distributor we've got is going to go in in the same position. So that's the new, new distributor we've got. And we're just going to wind that to the same position. We'll take the cap off so we can see where the head's pointing. So that's locked in now, pointing up to cylinder one at top dead center. So now that we've got this one fitted, uh, this particular new distributor unit only has one position for a bolt to go through on the left hand side, doesn't have this one on the right. I'm not sure whether that's an issue, uh, but we'll fit this one and um, it should hold it tight enough anyway. And of course that's locked in for top dead center, first cylinder, um, and should be okay. So now we're just going to go ahead and remove all of the uh, old coil and distributor wires, etc., and reinstall the new coil uh, brackets wires and get it all hooked up again. Now I like to leave everything connected to the distributor still, just so you can see where everything goes for the new system. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I find it's a little bit simpler when you're trying to put this thing back together and making sure you've got things around the right way. So this is the new coil that we're gonna fit, AccuSpark, and that'll just go in place of the old one, comes with its own bracket and everything as part of this kit. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put this in and wire it up the same as the previous one. Right, so one of the things you've got to be a bit careful of with these old minis and any other cars is whether or not they've got a ballast ignition system or not. And I wasn't sure with the Australian minis. I know in the British cars it started from about 1984 and they had ballast ignitions, uh, but I wasn't sure in the Australian cars and I couldn't see any ballast on the wiring, but I thought I'd better check in case. So I've got a, a multimeter and that's, this is important because you need to determine whether or not you can actually send your positive wire directly to the coil. Um, from the distributor. Um, so the multimeter, if it's a 12 volts that's on the supply line to the coil, if it's 12 volts then it's fine to do so. If it's 9 volts and it indicates you've got a ballast system and you need to make sure you're hooking your distributor up through your ballast wiring um, to, the, to the coil. We've pretty much got everything set up for the car ready to go. I had to make a sort of makeshift connection here between the negative on the distributor and the negative on the coil. Uh, reason being, there were two uh, male connections, so I had to sort of splice them together here, and then that goes into the negative port there on the coil. Uh, we've got the main positive lead from the distributor going to the coil, and we've also got the other positive connection on this wire going to the other positive port on the coil here, and I determined what was positive and negative again by using that multimeter uh, that I showed you earlier. So we're going to start putting in the engine oil now. I've done up the sump plug at the base of the engine. We've got the new oil filter to go on now. So what we're going to do is just break that open, put some oil in it uh, before we fit the filter, and then we're going to fill the engine with oil. Okay, that's looking fairly full now. Top 
Okay, so we're going to now refit this full of oil. Okay, and that's up nice and tight, so oil will start pumping as soon as the engine turns over. And then, of course, with the remainder of the oil, the full five litres or the remainder of the five litres will go into the engine. Now, of course, we've got the auxiliary fuel tank set up as well, which is just a gravity feed tank, which is perfect for tuning and things. Um, the reason I don't want to use the normal fuel tank, this car sat for over 10 years, and obviously there's a um, bunch of gunk and crap in the tank. I'll eventually uh, refill that fuel tank and just let it flow out. I've already started letting some of the fuel flow out when I've turned over the engine and the mechanical fuel pump has kicked in and, uh, and just sort of dripped it into a, a tray below. Uh, be careful with that, of course, if you're going to disconnect that line because you're going to get fuel and things um, shooting everywhere. So I've just put that line facing underneath the car away from the exhaust manifold, of course, uh, just dripping into a tray and the tank's completely empty now, so that's not going to cause any problems. So I've got here rigged up the little auxiliary tank, which is just a sort of a motorcycle um, tuning tank. Obviously you can just use it on your carby, just run it direct into your carby uh, fuel bowl. Uh, you might have to put a little bit of fuel uh, down the um, air intake just to get the car going to start with. Now when I had my engine in top dead center position, I turned it over and over and over and it would not start. It wasn't until I started advancing the distributor, so turning it, twisting it to the right, so that means loosening this silver bracket in here, loosening that and twisting the distributor slightly to the right to further advance the spark. And the engine seemed to run better and better the further I advanced it. So I'm gonna try advancing it a little further now and then we'll try and start it up again. We had it running just for a minute there uh, and we'll see how it goes this time. So we're just gonna loosen this off a little bit. You don't need to take it the whole way off. You just need it so you can Move the ignition slightly, that should do us. And then we're going to advance it just a tiny bit to the right. I think that's about all it's going to need in this case. And then we tighten it up again. Now I'm sort of guessing and playing around here. I may have gone a little bit too far advanced. But we'll give this a shot, see if it turns over. There's a major flat spot in it, um, but we'll just play around with the carby settings a bit as well. So that started up a lot quicker and is running a lot smoother than what it was when it was further retarded. The advance moving the distributor a bit forward again has, um, has really helped the engine. I haven't tuned it revving though and that's something that we'll have to do next. So this is now running after I have tuned it a little bit. And when I say tuned it, I mean I've just played around with the advance on the distributor. But I also found that when I was accelerating before, there was a flat spot and I didn't know what it was. The top of the carby, the little um, dash pot thing had actually popped out. And so that's, that's a big problem and that's gonna cause your flat spot. So make sure you got oil in your dash pot on the carby and make sure that's done up tight. There's a special type of oil you can put in there. A lot of people just put engine oil in, but there is a special SU oil that you can get for that. I'm really happy with actually how the engine is running here at idle. I'll show you how it runs at rev now.
So you could hear there, there was a bit of a backfire. So again, a bit of timing refinement is needed. That's it for this episode. We've got the car running and we're happy with that. However, we've got a bit of refinement work to do, getting the timing right, stopping the backfires. That's probably a matter of playing a bit with the carburetor, uh, playing around with the timing, advancing and retarding it to get it just right and making sure it's spot on and that the acceleration uh, responds immediately without any issues. Uh, next episode, we'll be dealing with that as well as the braking clutch reconditioning. Again, this car hasn't been used in over 10 years. Uh, the clutch master cylinder had seized. I've managed to fix that, but there's a lot, obviously a lot of issues that need to be repaired before it gets back on the road. Uh, so like and subscribe, and you can see what happens in the next episode. Thanks a lot.